Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Chen Chen, and on this channel, we talk about creating photorealistic 3D assets. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how I look depth this asset inside of Blender. I only recently started to learn how to do this, so everything is new for me as well. Blender is an amazing software because it's completely free. So for anybody that's interested in 3D but don't know how much investment they want to put into their learning process, Blender is a great way to start. Once I open Blender, this is what you're going to see. You're going to start with a cube. And uh, the first thing I want to do is actually to change my navigation towards something that's uh, more Maya-like. It's always a little uncomfortable to get into a new software in the beginning, so I figured change the basic control to be something that I'm a little bit more familiar with. It's going to help me get into the software. So I go into Preference, Key Maps. I'm just going to change the basic control of Rotation, Pan, and Zoom to um, Alt Right Click, Alt Middle Click, and Alt Left Click. I'm going to delete this cube for now. I don't really need this. I have an asset that I already created outside of Blender. So I'm just going to go import and import OBJ and bring that asset into my viewport. Here is the metal helmet that I want to render today. Inside the Blender, you're going to see all this tab on top that says Layout, Modeling, Sculpting. They are basically different layout structure for different tasks within the pipeline. So for this guy, I'm going to go to Shading. You see my object turned purple and that's because there is a texture missing because there's no texture assigned to the object currently. Also on the right side top corner, I selected the last circle and that's called viewport shading. So in this viewport, I'm going to see real time shading of uh, what my object and material looks like currently. The first thing I want to do is to create a HDR. So there's lighting inside of my scene. Under the work panel, I'm going to use shift eight to bring up this menu and I'm going to choose environment texture. And I'm going to connect this environment texture to my word output. From this environment texture node, that is where I'm going to link my HDR. I'm going to choose this HDR to start testing my material. Now I'm going back to the object panel. Under this panel is where I'm going to see all the shaders that's associated with this OBJ. By default, there is a principal BSDF material connected with my object. And I think that's the material that you are going to create 80% of your materials with. So before I start rendering, I want to figure out what is my camera and my current shot looks like. There is a tiny camera icon on the right side of the screen. And if you click it, it will show you what's the framing currently. But if you don't like your framing and you want to reframe it, once you move it, you kind of got out of the camera view. Um, so what you can do is open this little menu and go into view tab. Under the view tab, there is a camera to view, which will lock what you see with the camera. Now you're free to adjust the framing and know what your final render is going to look like. For rendering, Blender has mainly two options. One is called EV and another one is called Cycles. Um, I don't know what Workbench does. Nobody ever talks about it. I guess nobody ever uses it. So EV is more of a real-time rendering and Cycles is more for a final high-quality render. When you select Cycle, it does give you the option of either choose to use CPU to render or use your graphics card GPU to render. So that's totally up to you. Um, supposedly GPU is a little bit faster, but I find that it's a little bit hard on my machine. So I'd rather keep it as CPU. The next thing I want to do is to add some subdivision to my object. As you can see, my base geometry is quite low poly and I don't want to see all the edges when I render. And also I'm going to assign displacement map to it as well. With my object selected, I'm going to Modifier Properties and I'm going to select Subdivision Surface. Once that's selected, you can see that there are two options. One is to see what kind of subdivision you want to see within your viewport and the second option is what kind of subdivision you need for your final render. To connect the displacement map first, I'm going to create another image texture node. Use Shift-A to bring up the menu and under textures, select image texture. 
I'm going to link my displacement map that I exported from ZBrush, which is 32-bit EXR. I have multiple UDIM for this object, so make sure that selection is on in your image texture node. The next node I need to finish this connection is a displacement node. So shift 8 again, and I can just go directly to search and type displacement. It will pop up. And I'm going to connect the color to height, and I'm going to connect the displacement to displacement. Wait for two seconds and we should be able to see our displacement map in the viewport. To adjust the intensity of the displacement map, you can change the scale number. Now let's start to connect some maps and see how everything looks with this shader. In the end for this project, I think I only use the base color map and also the roughness map. I'm going to quickly adjust the shader. There's not too much we need to do here. I'm going to make metallic 100% because this is a metal object. I'm going to keep the specular at 0.5. And uh, the next thing I have to do is to change the IOR to 1.75, which is more in line with metal material. It's time to connect the roughness and see what we get. That is some really, really shiny metal, and it's a little too dark than I wanted. On this object, there are two main materials. One is the metal, and another one is the grunge, kind of like brown, dirty grunge in between the ornaments. Um, for right now, all I see is metal, and it's really dark, and I don't see the different uh, grunge material on top, even though inside of my roughness, there is a difference between those two materials. So I think the best thing to do here is to have a mixed shader and uh, put the metal and the grunge in different shaders. So I made another principal BSDF and that's going to be the grunge material. Also shift A, going to search and there is a mixed shader that I'm going to connect my metal as the base material and my grunge on top as the second material. I'm going to set the mask to zero for now so we see the metal on its own. Now I'm going to quickly connect all the maps for the metal material and the grunge material and also the mask that mix those two material together. There is a very good trick inside of Blender where if I just connect any of my texture directly into the material output, I will be able to look at my texture individually. And this is actually a great way to see what's going on with your texture and if anything needs to be adjusted to make the material better. For me right now, this roughness is way too strong, so I'm gonna bring up a bright contrast note just to lower the roughness a little bit. Connect the mix shader back to the material output and we can see what we did there. I'm also going to adjust my base color value a little bit. Once I'm happy with the basic metal look, I'm going to go into adjusting the grunge material as well. I'm going to turn the mask to 100%, so I'm only looking at this material by itself. This is what the grunge looks like after I plugged in the base color map and roughness map, and it's 
way brighter than I thought it should be. So I'm adjusting the color again with some curve note. For the roughness is also a little bit too specky than I want it to be. I want this thing to have almost no speck at all. So I'm adjusting it with a curve note again. The spec color is also a little bit too high, so I'm toning it down to 0.5. The last thing is I need to create another image texture node and link in my mask. I actually do not have a material mask for this, but I saw the original roughness map with those two materials together. It's pretty close to a mask. So I just need to uh, connect it to either a curve node or maybe a contrast node to get that um, contrast up. At this point, all the notes I needed are already inside. It's just a matter of adjusting them and balancing everything out to get the final results I need. I think I'm pretty happy with this level where uh, the metal and the ground on top are clearly uh, displayed in the material. And that concludes this quick little tutorial about how to look dev inside of Blender to create photorealistic materials. I hope this was a helpful tutorial for you and it's definitely something new for me as well. If you enjoyed the video, please like the video and subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next one.